Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Adoption Squad, and thanks for listening. I'm your host, Mary. And I'm Annie. (laughs) How are you, Annie? I'm good. How are you? Uh, Yeah. Also good. Um, Enjoyed the dreary weather today? (laughs) Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, just kind of hunkered down and, um, you know, stayed inside. And apparently it's going to be 70 degrees by the end of the week, but... You know, uh, okay. yeah, so that's at least well, what they say, but who knows? <laughs> don't hate me, but I listened to Christmas music all day. <laughs> <gasps> no, you did not. I did. It was snowing. What oh, are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. Yeah. I need Thanksgiving to happen. Okay, fair and, enough. And, you know, I have a birthday that is shortly after that Mm. so my rule is until that birthday happens i'm not listening to christmas music okay yeah i know it's dumb but it's always been that way for me it's good to have structure (laughs) (laughs) so i guess back to the podcast but you know (laughs) it's nice to catch up um yes it is we always have so much to talk about too but um, hopefully if you're, um, if you're not new to the podcast, we did put out a, our first mini sewed that, um, we titled Angelina's story. So that was the last episode that we aired on Sunday of this week. And, um, I think we've decided that we're going to continue to do that with listener letters. That's going to be our format is to release those on a Sunday when we get them. Um, So if you have a story of your own, of course, send it to us at the adoption squad at gmail.com. But as for last week's full episode, we were talking about my story and how I made contact with my biological mother and the wonderful letter that she sent Mm -hmm. In reply, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, <sighs> you know, yeah. it's it's burned in my memory, and of course, I kept that letter. Um, mm-hmm. Somebody did ask me, "Did you keep that letter?" Yes, absolutely, I did. Um, yeah, you know, so it's not always going to go the way you anticipate. But today, we want to talk about Annie's side of the story and how she initially made contact with her biological. Mother, am Mother I correct? Mother first. Mother's yeah, first. That was okay. the, first, the first person I made contact with. And I cracked open my own file today of uh, documentation of my search. And it's interesting how long it took me to get it together to do this. I think I'd get a little piece of information and just sit on it mm-hmm. and then get a little more information and sit on it. And then there's this flurry of activity where I have a list of uh, websites that will help you with your search, different um, hints on how to complete your search And letters from different agencies that say, we can't share any information with you, but you can get the original certificate from blah, blah, blah. And that was my first hint. I didn't know I could get, well, it was actually a friend of mine who told me I could get uh, my original birth certificate. But before he even told me that, I got a letter from an agency that I completely forgot about that said the same thing, that I could get a copy of my original birth certificate. But to summarize, I think it's just kind of uh, mind blowing sometimes that it's such a secret, you know, that Mm -hmm. your origins must be kept locked down. Right. Uh, So I I think that the more open adoptions um, are a little more compassionate in some ways, but. I'm not going to get on a soapbox today. This is about my story. <laughs> so um, so I finally, you know, through this many twists and turns of writing to agencies and getting a copy of my mother's original birth certificate and then tracking down through 
uh, phone books. Um, I found an address. So I decided to send a letter. I did not keep a copy of the letter that I sent to her. Mm. So I'm fairly certain it said something about, you know, I was born on such and such a date. Mm -hmm. Um, I would like to make contact with you. Um, I'm not. And it's funny to think about how apologetic I think. (laughs) The. Yeah, that you you feel somewhat that this person made a decision. You don't want to Mm -hmm. disrupt their life, but you do want the information. Right. So um, I send this letter. And again, like you didn't hear back, didn't hear back. And I had moved very far away from where I had been adopted, but I was traveling back um, to visit other family members in the area. And I was just uh, kind of beside myself. I'm like, oh, I really just want to go knock on her door since I'm here. And my husband at the time calls me and he goes, oh, by the way, your letter got sent back to us. It's the wrong address. No. And I'm like, oh, you're kidding me. Uh, So so just a quick question uh, about what year would this have been? Uh, Mid nineties, mid nineties. Okay. So So, internet was not necessarily in everyone's home at this point in time. No, I was working in an industry that was a little bit advanced technologically. So, you know, I had access at work and, you know, we had the dial up AOL at home um, that was just painfully slow. Uh Um, And, and all the information that's on the web now just wasn't available then. Right. So anyways, he tells me the letter's been sent back. So I go to the to a phone booth. Yeah. You know how they used to have phone books dangling. I do in remember. A plastic sleeve in yes. the phone booth. Ugh. And I'm flipping through it. I'm looking for her married name and I find it and I'm like sure enough they had moved. So um there's a phone number and I'm like do I do it? Do I just cold call? And I did. Mm cold called from a phone booth and this very sweet voice (laughs) picks up the phone and says, you know, hello. Uh, I'm like, I didn't even know what I was going to say. I just said, hi, I was born on May 18th, blah, 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 year. Um, I think that date might mean something to you. And there was a pause and she said, yes, it does. <laughs> and I just said, are you able to talk right now? And she said, no, I can't, hmm. but call me tomorrow. Oh, okay. So okay. Sh- open door. There you open go. Open door. All right. So I make the call tomorrow. And of course, I'm like, she sounded inviting. Mm-hmm. Oh, I hope I can meet her on this trip. So I called her the next day and she said, yeah, we can't meet right now. I have to talk to people and I have to decide if I'm going to talk to people in my life. She had been married. She had had um, other children. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew anything. Right. So she had to decide what she was going to do. But she was happy to hear from me. Um, wanted to keep the lines of communication open, but was going to have to do that carefully until she told everyone. Okay. Well, she must have like slept on it for one night and everybody knew (laughs) very quickly. Yeah. I'm not sure. She never really told me how she broke it to her husband. But when I have an older half brother from a previous marriage, And then she had me and then got married to the, basically the love of her life Mm -hmm. and had two more children with him. When they found out, it was as if they had already known, like, they're like, oh, that makes sense. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) that just makes sense. They felt like, I think they felt maybe psychically or something 
that there was something in the middle there that just hadn't been explained. Like a missing piece of a puzzle. A missing piece of a puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so I, you know, I found out conversations that she had had with the siblings and her husband and (laughs) my uh, half sister was at home with, well, she was visiting she was living out of town too. She was visiting um, our mother and her father and just, he was doing the dishes and she went up and I guess put her arm around him and said, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. You know, just wondering how he felt about all of this. And he, he just smiled at her and said, our Mary was a busy little bee. (laughs) something to that effect (laughs) and they just laughed and it's like what are you gonna do I mean he just he accepted me wholeheartedly oh he was just a beautiful person so so the actual contact then um I couldn't visit her that trip I had to go back home and then I uh was traveling in Chicago When I'm staying at a bed and breakfast and I get a phone call, I don't even think I had a cell phone at this point. I know I didn't. Hmm. So there had to have been contact in a way where she knew where I was. I don't remember how that worked out. I must have called her and said, okay, here are my whereabouts for the next week. Right. Feel free to reach out. Feel free to reach out. That Mm -hmm. must've been it. Cause I I'm sitting in the bed and breakfast, probably snacking on something. And, uh, I get this phone call and it's Mary. I'm Mary is a generic name. I can use it. Mary. Yeah. Um, Not me. Um. (laughs) Um, calls and says, oh, by the way, I have your sister and brothers here and they want to talk to you. And I just was like a little kid at Christmas. She's like, what do you say? I've never seen their faces. I, you know, mm-hmm. what do you do for a living? Where, you know, mm-hmm. you know, your siblings, but you know, zip about each other. Right. So it was a really fun conversation. I can barely remember any details <laughs> about that conversation, but I was just like floating because they just all seemed really nice and welcoming and excited that they had this sibling. And then the sister was like, I always wanted a sister. So this is like fantastic. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. So, yeah, here you go. Yep. Uh, well, you got a sister. Because that, that could go so many directions when oh, yeah. people find out about a secret being revealed. It's mm-hmm. either, okay, I can understand that. Or how dare you for lying to me all this time? Right. So it's kind of, I mean, you never really know how someone's going to take that kind of news. I mean, this isn't just, yeah. oh, you know, I cheated on a math test. This is, I have had another child. So right, right. it's always interesting to see how people are going to react to that kind of news. So this is, this is good for you. Oh, it was good for me that Mm -hmm. they just were like, okay, well, and I think, you know, as I've said to other people who have maybe uh, had children that were unplanned or have, are talking about other relatives who are having children that were unplanned, land i'm like it's a baby Mm -hmm. there are hundreds of thousands of them born every day Mm -hmm. it should not be this you know it's earth shattering because you have to take care of the thing let's be real but right (laughs) yeah but (laughs) you know it's it's natural it's what happens Mm -hmm. it's part of nature People get pregnant. Yeah. So, like, let's just stop the stigma, shall we? That's been my thing forever. Anyways, so yeah. they're very welcoming. And um, then I get the chance to finally meet her. And she was very sweet. Um, before I met her, she, I suggested, well, let's meet at a restaurant. Let's go for coffee. Let's do this, do that. And she's like, no, no, I can't do that. Mm -mm." And 
then she finally said, well, I'm, I can't because I'm in a wheelchair, but it's not anything you have to worry about. It's not 